This is Autofocus, the Philippine Motor Show on Television. I am Butch Gamboa. Welcome. For Auto Feature tonight, we will have the BMW X6 3.0D. Highlights of the recently held STV ARCC is lined up next in our special feature segment. Head to head pits two crossover SUVs, Honda HRV and Mazda CX3. Plus, our weekly updates on the latest news and developments in the auto industry and its peripheral sectors, plus the latest released automobiles from around the world. Welcome back. Here now are the latest news and developments in the local auto industry and peripheral sectors. Colombian Autocar Corporation, the exclusive distributor of Kia vehicles in the Philippines, recently launched the all-new fourth-generation Kia Rio in an event held at the capital commons Pasig City. During the launch, the all-new Kia Rio was unveiled with all of Kia's latest technology and design innovations. Outside, the tiger nose grille that is formed by sportier headlights is emphasized. The headlamps are composed of static bending lights that light up during cornering and LED daytime running lights that automatically turn on once the engine is started and the handbrake is released. Meanwhile, the cabin inside was presented to be uncluttered with a driver-oriented dashboard and with key features that ensure passenger comfort like the ample head and leg room at the back and full automatic climate control. Kia customers in the Philippines can avail of the all-new Kia Rio that comes with a lightweight 1.4L engine paired with 4-speed automatic transmission. The all-new Kia Rio isn't as, as uh, we call it now, all-new, right? So it still carries the Tiger Nose Grille, the signature design of our chief designer, Mr. Peter Schreier. But right now, the Rio, we are introducing it as a hatchback five-door subcompact sedan. We have three models. We have the 1.4-liter SL manual transmission priced at 735000 Then we have the mid-trim, which is the 1.4-liter automatic DX priced at um, 845000 And the top of the line, Rio, what we call now GL model, priced at 955000 what makes it different now is what we are introducing to the market is the hatchback design, but it's now competing at the price levels of the four-door sedans, so making the model a lot more competitive. We still have three trim levels, but now we call it SL, DX, and GL. It still carries the features and the design leadership by Mr. Peter Schreier has a 1.4 liter engine. We do not have a 1.2 liter engine anymore, but all of the models, even the manual transmission, has a 1.4 liter engine. So it has a little more power now, a little more spunk under the hood. I welcome everybody and I'm inviting everybody to please go to the New York Skia dealership near your area starting next week. We should have the uh, test drive vehicles already at the dealer showroom and please come visit and check it out for yourself. Hyundai Acer Resources Incorporated, the official distributor of Hyundai vehicles in the Philippines, recorded 2,521 unit sales for the month of April. This made the total sales from January to April 2017 rise up by 9% as compared to the units sold in the first four months of the previous year. Leading Hyundai's impressive performance is the passenger car segment which grew by 10% with 7,753 units. The passenger car segment is led by Hyundai Accent as it remains as the brand's top-selling nameplate with 5,162 units sold. Meanwhile, the light commercial vehicle segment sales also rose by 8% during the first four months of the year with 3,609 units sold. The growth in this segment is led by Tucson and H100 models.
Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features TV magazine, now takes a short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Autofocus, the weekly automobile show. We have more news about the auto industry still up ahead. But in the meantime, here is a review of one of the latest models from BMW. Defying the conventions of design, the BMW X6 Sports Activity Coupe is by all means a love it or hate it affair. As the most controversial yet head-turning member of the BMW X family, it's the most outward sign of exclusivity and power, as we found out in this week's Auto Feature. At a glance, the BMW X6 immediately communicates its muscular styling. It connotes a man that's ready for action. Indeed, it's so sporty that BMW calls the sole variant available locally pure extravagance. You cannot get a more fitting name than that. Among its key features include sweeping chrome inserts and the front bumper's X-shaped contours. The bi xenon headlights with corona rings that connect to the double kidney grille and the sharply drawn lines. At the back, the coupe-like stance is emphasized by the high opening tailgate, flat rear apron, and three-dimensional L-shaped LED taillights. Unique to the Pure Extravagance model is a new exterior finish called Cerium Gray, which is featured on areas like the mirror caps and underbody guard. Inside, the X6 offers a luxurious yet personal sense of style. The high seating position, typical of the X models, is juxtaposed with premium materials and finishing. The highly intuitive instrument panel features the BMW Navigation System Professional as standard equipment complete with a 10.25-inch control display screen operated by the BMW iDrive system. The rear seats feature a 40-20-40 split folding bench which allows the luggage compartment to grow from 580 liters to 1,525 liters, 75 more liters than the previous model. Under the hood is BMW's twin power turbo diesel engine with 258 horsepower and 560 newton meter of torque from its 3.0 liter displacement. This inline six power plant paves the way for a 0 to 100 km per hour time of just 6.7 seconds. An 8-speed automatic transmission connects to the engine and is supplemented by BMW's full suite of efficient dynamics technology that improves fuel economy. This includes an intelligent all-wheel drive system. On the open road, the X6 belittles its size thanks to an extensive weight loss program compared to the previous model. It can actually get up on its toes and dance around bends thanks to its adaptive suspension package. The steering is quick, allowing for precise control for the most demanding of drivers. More than just pure power, the BMW X6 comes with a long list of standard equipment that satisfies even the most discerning of owners. Features include 20-inch alloy wheels, automatic tailgate operation, Dakota leather seats, a four-zone climate control, and a Harman Kardon surround sound system. The 
ongoing evolution of BMW's sports activity coupe has certainly enabled the X6 to offer an even broader variety of qualities than its most immediate predecessor. These features come together not only marking the distinctive style of the X6's innovative character, but also to deliver a rare yet special kind of luxury for the progressive man. More news about the automobile and its industry after we pause for another short break. I'll be right back. Welcome back to AutoFocus, the show for the automobile enthusiast here on Solar Sports and back to more auto industry developments. Shell Filipinas recently unveiled their treat to their customers as the summer season ends. For its customers on a road trip this season, Shell refurbished the restrooms of its gas stations across Metro Manila, North Luzon, South Luzon, and even across NLEX and SLEX. Shell announced that the newly designed restrooms are equipped with new fixtures, air conditioners, and modern interior designs that will help refresh their customers in the middle of a road trip. Ford Philippines announced that it is expanding the presence of its experiential test drive activity called the Ford Island Conquest this month reaching out to more Filipinos in east of Metro Manila and in North Luzon. The Ford Island Conquest is a test drive arena with an outdoor course featuring a water wading drive through that gives car enthusiasts and interested buyers a chance to experience the Everest, Ranger and Echo Sport. The Ford Island Conquest will also include a Ford showroom where both owners and interested buyers can learn more about after-sales services and cost of ownership packages. I would like to invite you to check out the Ford Island Conquest, Ford Philippines' ultimate test drive arena for car enthusiasts and buyers to experience the Everest, Ranger, and Export. It is an outdoor course designed to highlight the features and capabilities of our most popular vehicles. With the Ford Island Conquest, we are also providing a good opportunity for customers to learn more about our after-sales services and ownership packages. We will also offer exciting freebies and exclusive Ford merchandise upon registration and participation in various activities. The Ford Island Conquest will be at the Laos Event Center in Pampanga on May 26 to 28. So please come and test drive a Ford this weekend, especially those near the venue. We are also excited to bring the Ford Island Conquest to more areas in Luzon this June and July. We have a lot more about the automobile coming up. In the meantime, we pause for another short break. You are watching Autofocus. I'll be right back. Welcome back to AutoFocus here on Solar Sports. Up next, we have our head-to-head, -head, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two automobile models belonging to the same category. The B-segment crossover category is hotly contested right now. With new models being launched left and right, manufacturers are pulling out all the stops for your cash. For this week's head-to-head, -head, we looked at the higher end of the spectrum with a Honda HRV and Mazda CX-3. Let the spec check begin. This week's head-to-head -head pits, Honda's youthful HRV and the sporty Mazda CX-3. What do these premium B-segment crossovers have to offer? Let's take a closer look. Let's start by taking a look under the hood. 
powering the Honda HRV is the trusty 1.8 liter iVTEC engine with Earth Dreams technology. It puts out 141 PS and 172 NM of torque, and it shifts via a continuously variable transmission with a 7-speed mode. Moving to the Mazda, it is powered by a 2.0-liter Skyactiv GML, similar to the one found in its big brother, the CX-5. Power is rated at 148 PS with 192 NM of torque. A 6-speed automatic is standard for the baby crossover. The Honda HRV is front-wheel drive only, while the Mazda can be specified with all-wheel drive. As for their suspension setups, both utilize McPherson struts at the front, but the two differ at the rear. In the HRV, it uses a double wishbone setup, whereas the CX-3 comes with multi-link suspension. Inside each of these crossovers offer a different personality. In the CX-3, the dash design is inspired from the MX-5 Roadster. It features a swooping wraparound dashboard with a minimalist theme. A thick leather trim steering wheel with stitching and leather seats with red highlights boosts the athletic ambience. Its instrument cluster also gets a similar layout as the MX-5 with a large dial in the center and flanked by two trapezoidal displays that show fuel level, trip meter, average fuel economy, real-time fuel economy, and more. Moving to the HRV, Honda did an upmarket approach with swooping lines and intricate design details. The wide dashboard houses three air conditioning vents for the front passenger with the touchscreen dominating the center. Also present is a novel touchpad for the climate control system. Honda's B-segment crossover also makes wise use of interior storage space with its unique floating center console. This allows the occupants to use a wide variety of cubby holes for added versatility. As for the instrument cluster, it has a floating effect with a cluster of dials logically arranged. A multi-information display shows various vehicle status as well as various options. The two also have different approaches for their infotainment systems. In the Honda HRV, all variants come standard with a 7-inch touchscreen display that houses not just entertainment functions but vehicle information and other options as well. As for connectivity, it packs Bluetooth, two USB ports, and HDMI in, iPod, and iPhone connectivity. Smartphone mirror linking can be done through the HDMI port and it channels sound through six speakers. Mazda CX-3 also has a 7-inch screen that can be operated either through touch or the scroll wheel found in the center console. Like the Honda, it accommodates both entertainment options and vehicle information and other menus. Bluetooth is standard, as is two USB ports, CD and auxiliary in. All models get six speakers, but the top-of-the-line model get a Bose sound system. With the interior covered, let's move to the outside of each car. Starting with the Mazda, it follows the brand's Kodo design language that features limb headlights plus Mazda's current signature grille. The lower half of the bumper is given an aggressive look with the sharp lines and defined angles. Onto the side, the window line creases upward all the way to the tail end of the crossover. As for the rear section of the car, the taillights have been inspired from the car it is based on, the Mazda 2 hatchback. As for the HRV, it too follows the Marquis design philosophy, especially at the front end. The front fascia follows the solid wing face theme with its headlights that blend into the grille. Soft curves define the side of the HRV and boasts a door pillar mounted handle at the rear doors. Moving to the rear, more curves are to be seen with the taillights complementing the rest of the design. An integrated rear spoiler is standard. In the safety equipment check, both models get dual airbags in their respective entry-level variants. Move of the range and both will get fitted with side airbags, as well as side curtain airbags and rear parking sensors. All variants of the HRV and CX-3 get rear-view cameras, traction control, stability control, and anti-lock brakes. 
On top of all those features, the HRV adds auto brake hold, hill start assist, and emergency stop assist. There are four variants to choose from of the Honda HRV. It starts with a 1.8e, then moves up to the 1.8el. There is also the 1.8e Modulo and the kitted out 1.8el Mugen. Prices range from 1,243,000 pesos to 1,513,000 pesos. The Mazda, meanwhile, has three trim levels available. The entry level model is a 2.0 FWD Pro, while the mid spec model is a 2.0 FWD Sport. Topping the range for the CX3 is a 2.0 AWD Active. CX3 prices start at 1,280,000 pesos to 1,480,000 pesos. The Honda HRV and Mazda CX-3 are prime examples of small cars that are big on equipment. Sporty, daring, and adventurous, these upmarket B-segment crossovers blend style and practicality in well-sorted-out packages. It's difficult to sort out the two, but one thing is for sure. Both the Mazda CX-3 and Honda HRV will definitely not leave you shortchanged. Autofocus, the weekly 60 minutes on television exclusive to the automobile and its industry. We'll be right back after another short break. You are back with us here in Autofocus, and as we continue with this week's presentation, we have a special feature for you. For many years, Sunshine Television has been staging the STV Auto Rally Corporate Challenge with the advocacy of road safety and friendly motorsport competition within the local auto industry. This year, STV once again brought together sportsmen and the local automotive companies in a whole day of rally sport. Sunshine Television, together with Socialcom Foundation for Asia, recently staged one of its most awaited annual events, the STV Auto Rally Corporate Challenge. The on-time, all-the-time motorsport competition is based on Europe's Tulip Rally, which is locally known as the Sampaguita Rally that reigned supreme in local motorsports during the 60s and 70s. Since its first staging in 2001, the ARCC has remained true to its commitment to promote road safety as well as camaraderie between corporate members of the local auto industry. First of all, I'd like to say welcome and thank you very much for participating in this year's STV Auto Rally Corporate Challenge. I just want to remind you once again what's all behind this. This is one of the advocacies of Sociocom Foundation and Sunshine Television to uh, promote further awareness to road safety. Those of you who have joined us would know the relation between road safety and this event. As you very well know, one of the very strict rules here is that nobody should be cited for any traffic violation during the entire conduct of the competition. The traffic authorities have been given special instructions to uh, look out especially for cars that have the rally stickers and of course we have our marshals to make sure that all participants do obey traffic rules and regulations. 
That is, of course, without saying that you are in Subic. This is the model area where traffic rules and regulations are really implemented. Good luck to all. Thank you again for joining us. Flagged off under the Subic heat in Harbor Point Mall's vast parking area, the corporate rally teams from Audi, Ford, Honda, Hyundai, Isuzu, Lexus, Mini, Nissan, Sangyong, Subaru, and Tata fielded their flashy as brand new models. The respective rally teams that have been participating, competing and supporting the rally ever since the beginning came back for this year's ARCC to conquer the challenging route prepared by veteran rally and race driver George Ramirez and IT expert Patrick Chua. It's a venue for us to relax with our, sometimes with the customers and their, with our media friends. So aside from the competition that the Auto Rally brings, it fosters a deeper friendship relationship and camaraderie amongst media friends and as well as customers. We have uh, three vehicles, one Tivoli Sport R and one Tivoli Sport and one Corando. And uh, we have in our team uh, one of the most popular uh, media men, uh, Ron de los Reyes, plus uh, our staff. STV ARCC veterans like multi-winner Eric Valera shares his thoughts about this eagerly awaited annual motorsport event. It was a very different experience. Uh, this is the first time uh, from start to finish, dere dere kami. You gave us sandwiches, pero hindi na namin nakain at all. Kahit water, wala kasi sobrang intense yung, yung route. No? There were some areas na 50 ang speed limit, pero ang nasa road book a bit higher, so medyo we had to also catch up. No? So it was a really totally different um, event this year. Last year's winners had difficulties but felt confident about the possible results. I think personally we did well, you know, given the limitations we had. But in that, we always had that feeling that we could have done better. Always. Always. But we're still happy with what we did today and fingers crossed with what happens. The rest of the rally teams have their fair share of stories about the rally as well. It's very uh, exciting. Napaganda ng route, challenging, especially uh, the checkpoint number 11. So, nakakahilo. <laughs> yung buong course kasi nasa 14, 14 checkpoints. May namis kaming dalawa. Maybe because dahil sobrang lalayo din ng mga checkpoints. Ni ramin na papan si mga checkpoints. Pero, ang ginawa na lang namin, hinabun na lang namin din yung mga namis namin. And we have to make sure na yung mga succeeding checkpoints eh, hindi na namin ni miss. It was a great, very great route, which, uh, very scenic views, and of course the challenge of time, I, I guess it was uh, very fulfilling yet very challenging as well. After the ARCC, the corporate rally teams are now thrilled to know who among the teams is on time all the time. We have 
witness yet another fun and friendly auto rally and we will witness more in the future as Sunshine Television continues to bring you the STV Auto Rally Corporate Challenge. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you found this edition of your Auto TV magazine informative as well as entertaining. Autofocus, the Philippine Motor Show and Television, shall again be back here on Solar Sports next week with the latest about the automobile and the auto industry. By the way, those who may have missed some part of the show or the previous weeks, do log on to our Autofocus website, www.autofocus.com.ph, any time of the day. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. Until the next time, this has been your host, Butch Gamboa.